While you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Hey, shalom, shalom. Most high in Christ, bless everybody. Y'all can respond. <laughs> so the, the title of today's class is 180 Degrees of Change. 180 Degrees of Change. Pull up that first, um, I think it was Wikipedia, the 180 Degrees. No, the 180 degrees was a idioms free dic dictionary. Do a 180 degree turn to make a big change in some area of one's life. If one physically turns 180 degrees, one will then be facing the opposite direction. So, so when you make a 180 degree turn, you turn in the opposite direction. So hence the title of the, the title is pertaining to repentance and our repentance we make we doing we making a 180 degree turn. We turning away from our old sin, sinful ways, the gossip, the lying, the adultery, the fornication, all of that, and we turn into God's commandments. We turn and we make we doing a complete turnaround. Pull up the definition of repentance. Repentance is reviewing one's actions and feeling contrition or regret for past wrongs, which is accompanied by commitment to an actual actions. That show improve a change for the better. In modern times, it is generally seen as involving a commitment to personal change and the resolve to live a more responsible and humane life. In other words, being sorry for one's misdeeds. Feels guilt over or feels guilt over or conviction that they have committed. The practice of repentance plays an important role in the Seratological doctrines of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Analogous uh, practices have been found in other world religions as well. In religion, in religious context, it often involves an act of confession to God to a, or to a spiritual elder, such as a monk or priest. This confession might include an admission of guilt, a promise, or intent not to repeat the offense, an attempt to make restitution for the wrong or in some way reverse the harmful effects of the wrong where possible. So repentance, one of the, the first, the, the first sentence, it says repentance is reviewing one's actions and feeling contrition or regret for past wrongs, which is accompanied by commitment to an actual actions that show. Move the screen over. The show improve a change for the better. This, so this is this is not in my notes, but this is what came up in my mind, in my spirit. Matthew chapter three, and verse eight. So it says, repentance is accompanied by commitment to an actual actions that show improve a change for the better. Matthew chapter three, verse eight. Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. So as we are in our, in our stages of repentance, we are in this truth, we are supposed to bring forth fruits, meaning our actions are supposed to back up us saying that we repent, us saying that we're not, we not, we putting that old man to death. We're not walking in the same ways that we walked before. We have to walk forward and move forward. Go to Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 19. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 19. The book of Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 19. Yet say ye, why doth not the son bear the iniquity of the father? When the son hath done that which is lawful and right, and hath kept all my statutes, and hath done them, he shall surely live. So it's basically saying that we all have to, we all individually have to take account for our own sins, our own shortcomings if we doing what's right we have we gonna we gonna be rewarded for it but if we doing what's evil we're gonna be punished for it we have to take account for our own actions read verse 20 the soul that sinneth it shall die the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him so the same thing, basically repeating the same thing. We are accountable for our own actions. 
if of course if we're supposed to be an example, we we an example to our sons, we example to our children. But ultimately, if if we teach our children the right way and they grow up and do wrong, they gonna have to give account for that. And vice versa, if we doing if we being evil and doing wrong, and our children grow up and actually keep the commandments, they're gonna be rewarded because they kept the commandments. Go to Galatians chapter six and verse three. The book of Galatians chapter six verse three. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. So we talked about this last week. If you think yourself to be something when you're nothing, you deceive yourself. Don't think of yourself more high. Don't, don't have yourself sit sat on a pedestal when you, when you shouldn't be on a pedestal. Read. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Because you yourself have made the necessary changes in your life. You have repented yourself. You have to prove your own work. You study the scriptures and you apply the scriptures. Read. For every man shall bear his own burden. Every man shall bear his own burden. We all are, we all are going to be responsible for our own lives. We all gonna have to give account to the Most High. When that day of judgment comes, we're going to have to give an account for our own actions. That's what Ezekiel 19, 18 and 20 was, was saying. Go back to Ezekiel 18 and 21. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Uh -huh. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. So if what we, if our action, when I act as we came into this truth, our actions was totally against God. We was doing our own thing. We was walking in our own ways. But we, we, the truth was presented to us, and we started repenting. We started changing our ways, and that change in our ways don't stop. It's not no stopping point. The stopping point is when Christ come back. We are we supposed to be continually changing day by day, changing, repenting, examining ourselves, doing what's doing what's necessary in our spirits to change to make sure that we are in line with God's commandments. That's what we are commanded to do. Read on. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. And his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. If we, and if we maintain and continue in that righteousness, we're going to live. And this is not the lift, living in this physical body that we're in right now. This is eternal life. This is us actually getting the kingdom, getting rewarded for our good works and good deeds. Get 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Is the, the, the process of repentance is a lifelong um, endeavor. It's not like in Christianity, oh, I, I uh, confess the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the blood of Jesus I'm saved. No, that's not, that's not what the scriptures talk about. It's not one time you, you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, and then now everything is good. You save. No, it's a continual day by day process. And a lot of times, as we going through that process, like the scriptures say that the commandments are not grievous. The commandments are not grievous, but a lot of times in our own mind, we make things difficult than what it really is. When all we, all we got to do is read it, study it, and apply it. But a lot of times, because of our own lust, we make applying the commandments difficult by overthinking it, whatever the case may be. We, we make it hard on ourselves by, um, by just, not, just not doing it. Read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So in our process of repentance, we repent and you, you have that, like the definition said, you have that remorse and you change, you turn, change direction. You make that 180 turn, you go away, away from your sin and your actions. You, that's, that's, that's what repentance is. You're actually changing your ways. You're changing your actions. Read that again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. So when you repent, 
and you actually sincerely sincerely repent and your your fruits show forth that because you grow, you change, you're making those changes, old things are passed away. But if you go back to those wicked things, no, those, you you won't get the same judgment. You're going to get judged for those wicked that wickedness. But if you move forward in repentance and you're growing, you're growing day by day, making them changes, then you will re be rewarded with that life. Um, go back to Ezekiel 18. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18 and verse 24. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness. Read 23 already. Uh, verse Verse 23, have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? So the Most High is saying, he, does he have any, people he's asking, does he have any pleasure in them that the wicked should die, and not that he should return from his ways? So basically what he's saying is, no, he don't want the wicked to die. He wants them to repent. He wants us all to repent, change our ways, and get right, and keep his commandments. Get Deuteronomy chapter 30. The more, that's why we that's why we all are here today, because the many things that we've done across, over the course of our lives, we deserve to be dead. We deserve death. But the Most High was long suffering to us. He was merciful to us. And now we're here to get it right because he don't want to he don't want to see the wicked. He don't want to see us die in our sins. He wants us to get it right. So he, he provided that opportunity. Deuteronomy 30 and. Started verse. 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 15. See, I've set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess thee. Uh-huh. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess thee. Read. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live. So he set before us life and death, but he said he told, he gave us clear instruction. Hey, even though I set before you life and death, choose life that you may live. Don't go down the path of destruction. Don't go back down the path of death. Choose life that you may live. Keep my commandments so you may live. Read. Verse 20. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of, his, of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land, which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. So, in, in to, from, so from today we in captivity. He want, to re, he want to return us into our land. He want to put us back in our place where we're supposed to be. But it's up to us to choose life. It's up to us to repent and get our minds right. And that's a continual, it's a continual process. From the day that we learned that we was an Israelite, we, we, we working towards that repentance. We continually repenting day by day, examining ourselves, fixing, the old, fixing those things that, that we lack, what we lacking at. Uh, go to 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. Because this time, the, the, this time or grace period, so to say, that we have is for us to get ourselves right. It's for us to get ourselves right. Second Peter three and nine. The book of Second Peter, chapter three and verse nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. So they say the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Meaning that the things that he destruction is coming. Destruction is coming and his kingdom is coming. And it's up to us to make sure that we're doing what's necessary so that when we when that time come, we on the right side of the fence. Read. As some men count slackness. But is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So the scriptures say that he's long suffering toward us, that all would come to repentance, that we all would make that change, that we all would 
turn turn away from our wicked ways, turn away from our ways that go against his commandments, and actually get ourselves right. Get ourselves right in, in his sight, how he views us, how the instructions that he gave us, that gave unto us. Read. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Because he's letting us know that the day of the Lord going to come as a thief in the night. None of us know when that day where the, where the, where the 144 is sealed, and we don't know that day. That, 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 that we don't know when the day is when the time is up. So it's up to us. We have to continually be getting ourselves right, continually examining ourselves, continually fixing those things that are wrong within us sincerely. Because that's what repentance is. Us having a remorse and seeing that we were the ways that we've been living were wicked, and we continually studying the scriptures and applying them. Studying the scriptures and applying them. Um, give me, go back to so Ezekiel 18 and 24. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18 and verse 24. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned, and his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned. And them shall he die. So if we if we doing the righteous acts, we 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 know we came to know that we are Israelites. We started the process of repentance, but then what happened? We lose patience. We lose patience, and we start falling backwards into our old ways, into our old self. It says all of the righteousness that you did is going to be wiped out, just like when when it said in verse what was that verse. 21 about the wicked if the wicked wicked will turn away from all his sins that he has committed and keep all my statutes and do all do that which is lawful and right he shall surely live he shall not die now we're reading the flip side of that where you doing you doing what's righteous you're doing the right things you're keeping the commandments but then you fall to away he said everything that you did that was righteous is going to be wiped out it's not going to be remembered because you fell right back into your old ways you fell right back into your sin Go to um, Sirach chapter 2 and verse 14. The book of Sirach chapter 2 and verse 14. Woe unto you that have lost patience. So it says, woe unto, woe unto you that has lost patience. Destruction unto you that has lost patience. If you were you doing what was right and then you fall to the way, you fell back. You fell back into your old habits and your old ways. You lost patience. You, 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 got, you, got, you, you, allow, you allowed your mind to get weary and say, hey, I've been doing good and the, and the kingdom ain't still, this kingdom ain't here. He ain't came yet. So you know what? I'm just going to go back to my old self. I'm going to go back to my old ways. You lost patience. And in that loss, losing your patience, you will be destroyed. Read. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? So in, in the day of judgment, in the day of the Lord's visitation, you, you, you're, you're going to, you, you're, you're going to be judged for your actions, for losing patience. There's nothing that you can do at that point. Get Galatians 6 and 9. The book of Galatians, chapter 6 and verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So what, is, what that, that us not losing patience, we have to make sure that we don't get weary in doing what's right. Doing what's right, and that's keeping the commandments. No matter, no matter what anybody else is doing, we have to make sure that we make our calling and election sure that we, us ourselves, we got to do what's right. We can't be weary in keeping the commandments because we're going to give account for what we've done. We're going to give account for our own actions. It's not going to be based on the actions of somebody else, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife. It's going to be based on your actions. So for us, we have to always keep it in mind that we cannot be grow weary and well doing. We always have to keep it focused on our mind and keep the commandments. Get uh, Sirach 20 and 32. Hey, really quick. You mind if I Go read ahead. the next verse? Go ahead. Uh, read verse 10 in Galatians 6. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity. Have what? Opportunity. What? Opportunity. Come on. Let us do good unto all men. You see that? Right now we all have opportunity. OK, and we're not all we don't know. We all know that our days are numbered. Right. But we don't know exactly what our, the number of our days is when the Lord is going to call our spirits back to him. So therefore, we must exercise or take advantage of what opportunity we have 
to serve God and make sure that we do what? Read on. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Let's read that part. Let us do good. Let us do good unto all men. Uh huh. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Especially unto them that are on the, of the household of faith. You all household of faith. Those that repent and keep the commandments and know that they're Israelites and I acknowledge that they are the Israelites. We are the household of faith. Uh, Give me uh, Luke 21 and 19 to go into that patience that the officer was bringing out. Luke 21 and 19. The book of Luke chapter 21 and verse 19. In your patience, possess ye your souls. Read it again. In your patience, possess ye your soul. So what is Christ saying? Us, we have to make sure our souls possess the spirit of patience. Patience. We have to make sure we exercise the spirit of patience, especially during our repentance. Okay? That's it. Test, test. So we uh, read a scripture in Rock where it said... Um, Woe to him that lost patience. I wanted to touch back on that real quick. What are some things that will cause us to lose patience while we're in this walk? Some of the things that will cause, excuse me, what are some of the things that will cause us to lose patience while we're in this walk? Let's go to the book of Mark real quick, chapter 4, start at verse 15. Because the Lord is going to give us the uh, recipe to, the recipe to, um, see what are some what are some of those things that will give us the cause of the stumble or to lose the patience because it said woe to you that lose patience destruction to you who lose patience so now read that when you get it the book of Mark chapter four and verse fifteen uh -huh. and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown but when they have heard Satan cometh immediately so Satan is coming to take to take away your patience read and take it away the word that was sown in their hearts. uh huh. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And that's us all in here. We've been sown, we've, we've, we've been, we heard the word, we received it with gladness, and the Lord have caused to put us to put a repent. The Lord have put a repentant spirit upon us. Read. And have no root in themselves. But some of the things that will happen as we in this walk, you have no root in yourself, meaning you don't study. Read on. And so endure, but for a time. Uh-huh. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So one of the things we're going over right now that calls you to lose patience is not studying. All right, read. And these are they which are sown among thorns, uh -huh. such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches. And the what? And the deceitfulness of riches. Uh -huh. And the lust of other things entering in. Choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So... The cares of this world is another thing that will call brothers and sisters to be, to lose patience. The cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. All right, read. And these are they which are sown on good ground, uh -huh. such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, and some in hundredfold. And this is what we all want to be. This is this the particular Israelite that we all want to be in right here, this category right here. But I just read those few scriptures to show you guys what are some of the things that will cause uh, any one of us to stumble and lose patience while we're in this walk. So let's be mindful of that and that we don't get tripped up by the wiles of Satan. That was it. All praises, excellent points. Uh, get Sirach chapter 20 and verse 32. Because patience, uh, did, I, did I see y'all definition of patience? Pull up the definition of patience. Why you read that? Get the definition of patience. Sirach chapter 20 and verse 32. Necessary patience is in seeking the Lord is better than he that leadeth his life without a guide. So it says necessary patience. So in this walk, it's necessary for us to have patience because it's going to be in, in, in our um, carnal mind, our physical body, there's going to be highs and lows. Our emotions are going to be up and down. One minute we're going to feel like keeping the commandments, and the next minute we're not going to have that. We're going to wake up, and we're not going to want to do what the Bible say do. But we have to have patience with ourselves and continue to be steadfast on outside of that feeling. We have to continue to actually do what the scriptures say to do. We have to keep the commandments. Read that and um read that, pull that definition up. 
patience, the capacity to accept or tolerate delay trouble or suffering without getting angry or upset. Uh, read some of them uh, uh, synonyms. Similarities. Uh, forbearance. I mean, forbearance. Tolerance. Restraint. Self-restraint. Resignation. Stoicism. Fortitude. Sufferance. Endurance. Calmness. Composure. Even temper. Even, even temperedness. Equanity. I mean, equanimity. Equanimity. Equilibrium. Serenity. Tranquility, uh, imperturbability, uh, unexcitability, understanding, indulgence, lenience, kindness, consideration, longanimity, inexcitability, perseverance, persistence, tenacity, diligence, assuity, application, staying power. Indefig indefit nah. fatigability. Indefatigability. <laughs> Doggedness. Uh, determination. Resolve. Resolution. Resoluteness. Obstin obstinacy. 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 Incidence. Singleness of purpose. Purposefulness. Pertinacity. So all of them words you got forbearance, fortitude, endurance. So the scripture we just read says necessary patience and seeking the Lord is better than he that leadeth his life without a guide. So we have to be able to accept sometimes things don't go how we want it to go, how we think it's going to go, how we plan for it to go. We're going to have various trials, troubles that try to stop us from keeping the commandments. We're going to have things go on at our jobs. We're going to lose jobs. We're going to lose friendships, families. We're going to lose various things. That's why I say necessary patience and seeking the Lord is necessary. Patience is necessary because that patience is going to give us fortitude. That patience is going to give us perseverance, uh, determination, resolve. Like the bishop always, uh, the bishop, one of the quotes the bishop says, is, uh, he's not always motivated, but he's always disciplined. That's necessary patience. Because we're not always going to feel like doing what we're supposed to do. So many times we're going to wake up and we're not, we're going to wake up, don't want to go to work. You're going to wake up and not want to study. You're going to wake up, not want to pray. You, but you have to have fortitude. That's this, the necessary patience is actually discipline. And as we, as we continue in our process of repentance, that dis our discipline should get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Because that's what we, if that's our focus and we actually consistently working at it, that discipline is going to get stronger. That patience is going to get stronger because it's always going to be things that go on. But like the scriptures say, he that endures to the end. That's what the scripture is telling us because we, we can't be quick to throw in a towel because things get hard. Because this truth is not going to be a cakewalk. It's going to be trials. It's going to be bumps in the road. It's going to be things that it's going to be hurdles that we got to jump over. And most of those hurdles is things that's in our spirit. Like we read in Sirach, get Sirach chapter 2. It's going, a, a lot of those hurdles is weaknesses and things in our spirit that come to the surface when trouble comes, when trouble arises. Sirach chapter 2, read 5. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. So, actually start at verse 1. Verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Uh-huh. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. So, that us uh, setting our heart aright and constantly enduring, that's that necessary patience. It ain't going to be a cakewalk. It's not going to be a cake. It's, it's not going to be a cakewalk to our carnal self. Because our carnal, it's, it's, it's our carnal nature, it's our flesh that's fighting against the spirit, that's fighting against us keeping the commandments. Because naturally, it's a, naturally, it's a lot of things that we, we wouldn't do and we wouldn't want to do. But we have to have that necessary patience. We have to have that fortitude. We have to have that resolve to constantly endure. And it says, did you read, did you finish that verse? No, sir. Read. 
and make not haste in the time of trouble. Don't be quick to throw in the towel. That's what that's saying. Don't be quick to throw in the towel because things get hard. Verse 5. Verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire. Gold is tried in the fire. When you heat up gold to the high extreme temperatures, the impurities of that gold rise to the top. So that's the same way when we go through trials, when we go through various the, the things that trigger our emotion and trigger our feelings, our weaknesses come to the surface. But it's in us, it's supposed, what we're supposed to do in them situations is, is recognize that weakness, find the scriptures, meditate, and fix that and strengthen that weakness. That's the purpose of that weakness coming to the surface. Not for us to throw in a towel and give up, no matter how long you you've been with, no matter how long you've been feel like you've been battling it or whatever. It's never a time to throw in a towel. You still got the understanding. You still here. You still know you're an Israelite. And you still know you got to keep the commandments. Fix it. It's it's obvious in us to a. Hey, it may have been two three years. You you going around. You seem like you're going around the same circle. Okay. Make it a resolve. You know what? Today, I'm not going to go around this circle no more. I'm going to fix this issue. I'm going to fix this problem. This process of repentance is a continual thing. It's a lifelong endeavor that we have to, we have to constantly endure. We have to have that necessary patience. Get uh, Proverbs 24 and 16. The book of Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. So that, that just man falling seven times and rising up again, that's having that necessary patience. You, you understand that we got all type of, excuse me, we got all type of wickedness that's in our subconscious mind. That in a lot of times we think it's gone and then something triggers, something happened, and it triggers that unconscious mind and it comes to the surface. And you're like, whoa, where'd that come from? I ain't thought, I ain't, I ain't had that feeling or thought that thought in years and it just came out of nowhere but that's that we have to have that constant resolve because living in babylon there's been a major witchcraft that been put on us in our mind where we got you got the music they play all of the stuff that go on has been embedded deep in our subconscious mind and the only thing that's going to get it out is the scriptures is the bible even when it comes to the surface us applying the commandments, having a resolve, having that necessary patience to apply the commandments, that's the only thing that's going to stop us from walking in that, that feeling, that walking in that emotion or walking in whatever that is that may, that, that may be your vice, that may be your weakness. We have to have a resolve. We have to constantly resolve ourselves. You know what? I'm going to study the scriptures. I'm going to find out what the scriptures say about it, and I'm going to apply it. We have to have that resolve in ourself. Uh, from there, did we finish that verse? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, pull up them them two clips that I sent. Hey, y'all, sir. Can Go I ahead. can I pull this uh, precept? Let me get Jude verse twenty. Just to land what what the officer was saying. My mic is clipping. But just to man, land back on what the officer was saying that we got we got to have that resolve in ourselves. To, to to strive for repentance and, and cleaning ourselves up, right? Read that. Let me show you what the scriptures say. The book of Jude, verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves. Doing on your, what? Building up yourselves. Notice the wording. L notice the language as it says. It says, building up yourselves. Meaning what? We must all take accountability to the, our self-building or our spiritual growth. Or our resolve. We have to build up ourselves. We all know what's in us that is troubling us or keeping us from going to that next level, right? Keeping us from perfection. We all know ourselves. So the scriptures say you must build up yourselves and building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Come on. Praying in Praying the holy in the Holy Ghost. Read it again. Praying in the Holy Ghost. So it says, notice it names three things. In your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. What's the Holy Ghost? The Word of God. Meaning what? You must be studying, praying, and spa. Our leadership been teaching us for the years this. Spa. Study, pray, apply. This is how you build up yourself. This is how you uh, examine yourself and you find out that resolve that you need. My 
mic is clipping. But that's it. That's it. That's it. Go ahead, officer. Uh, go, go, go. No, put up that clip. We all have something we want to change or improve in our lives. But for many of us, despite our best attempts, we just don't. And it's not that we don't have what it takes. We all have the right organ for the job. It's that more often than not, our brains become our toughest opponent in the fight to achieve our goals. So why do our brains make change so hard? And what can we do to make it a little easier? Let's begin by meeting the part of the brain needed to make change happen in the first place. The prefrontal cortex, or the PFC. Your PFC is the wise, smart, responsible, high-maintenance boss of your brain. It's the one telling you not to eat that delicious plate of cookies when you're trying to lose weight. In fact, it's the one telling you to lose weight in the first place. The PFC also regulates our emotions, like when you hear that toddler screaming incessantly on the airplane. It calms you down and tells you not to yell, Shut your damn kid up already! Now here's where things get interesting. Your PFC needs a lot of metabolic fuel to function, and when it quickly consumes this limited resource, it makes resisting that cookie or keeping your emotions in check much harder. To make matters worse, as your PFC loses control, your basal ganglia, the place where your habits and routines hang out and develop, finally gets to put all those bad habits you wanted to quit in the first place back to work. And unlike the PFC, the basal ganglia is highly energy efficient and can operate without you even knowing it. That's how you are able to drive at 80 miles per hour for long stretches of time with no conscious awareness. There is hope in this knowledge though. And just like most solutions, here, in the midst of the problem, you can find a big part of the answer. You see, all the basal ganglia needs to start taking over is for you to press the repeat button on the change you're trying to make. So rather than exhausting your PFC with all the different strategies and tasks needed to reach your goal, make repetition of a simple task one of your biggest priorities. Then, over time, you will realize that you just developed a new habit or skill that will help you on your journey to reaching your big goal. I pull up that next one. And, it, and this is highlighting... Um, how your brain is basically that's your comfort zone. You're so comfortable doing certain things that when you start when you start trying to do something different, you automatically revert right back to that same behavior. You have to yeah, you have to continuously you have to continuously do the same to do something different to change that habit. That's basically what the what is what it's saying. What we have and what we understand and what we learn, what we get that change that we have to continually apply and do is keeping the commandments, continuing the study of the scriptures. We have to that's the change that we have to make. We understand that, yeah, we know exercising is profitable for a little, but our main thing is that we have to change our actions, our behaviors with the scriptures, change our bad habits with the laws. Pull up that next one. Imagine sitting atop a snowy hill, sled in hand. In front of you lies a well-worn sled path. You've been down this path a million times before. You set down your sled, pull up your feet, and go, gliding effortlessly down the hill. It requires no effort on your part, and no thought. You then trudge back up the hill, and this time decide to try a brand new path. So you set down your sled, push off, and move half an inch. You push again and get another half an inch. Another push, another half inch. The pattern continues as you move haltingly down this new path. It is effortful and intentional, and it is through dedication and commitment that you get down that hill. If you decide to try that new path again, it will be slightly easier, but it won't be that same easy glide down like the first hill. At least, not yet. But the more you go down that new hill, the quicker and easier it will become to slide down it. And if you keep choosing that path over and over and over again, eventually it will become even easier than the first path. The pathways in our brain are just like that. 
all our go-to thoughts and habits are the easy, well-worn paths. When we try another path, like when we try to change our negative thinking or modify our unhelpful ways of responding to other people, at first, it isn't easy. In fact, it is painstakingly effortful. And if we interpret this effort as never ending, we are likely to give up. But if we remember that we are just in the beginning stages of forming a new pathway, knowing that each use deepens the foundation just a little bit more, we can find hope that this effort is worthwhile. And if we just keep going, it will lead to change. So real, so go to, um, just re-watching these videos, a bunch of scriptures that I didn't write down came to my mind. Uh, go to Sirach chapter 39 and verse 1. Because we, we know and understand the, 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 the way that we must change our actions and change our behaviors is by going to the scriptures. Because the scriptures give us the solutions to change our behaviors, to change, the, to make those difficult changes. Because a lot of things, a lot of, uh, most of us didn't grow up keeping God's commandments. So when we keep, when we read the commandments, some things are easy, some things, oh, that's neat, I could, I could do that, that's nothing. And some things... We have to fast, we got to pray, we got to really fight to change those things. But we always have to maintain that resolve, that necessary patience to continue at it little by little. Some things, like even with studying, if, you, if you're not accustomed to studying, you may have to start 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes in the morning. And you do it over time, you do that consistently, that 10 minutes will grow to 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. Because now you don't develop the habit and now it's become continuous. Whereas a lot of times when you're trying to change those behaviors that's a little bit more difficult and you try to jump off the cliff and go set apart two hours and still go and study, you're going to crash and then you're not going, you, you're more prone to not continue in that process of, of studying every day. So you start, you, you take, day by day, you take them small incremental steps and continue doing it and you build a new habit. And then the time going to extend because now you developed a new habit. And you, you automatically, oh, no, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm sit here for 10 more minutes. I'm going to sit here for 30 minutes. If you got the time, if you ain't, you know, if you ain't in, in time constraints with work and things like that, you're going to increase that time because now you don't built that habit, whereas before you wasn't accustomed to doing it. Um, what I tell you to get? Sirach 39. 39 yeah, read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 39 and verse 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied um, in the... Sorry. Read 38 and 24 first. The book of Sirach, chapter 38 and verse 24. The wisdom of the learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure. And he that hath little business shall become wise. So the, the, our wisdom come from opportunity of leisure. If majority of us we, we we have a lot of things going on whether it be work your family we got a lot of things going on so we have to make that leisure time and that's that okay i'm gonna wake up 15 minutes earlier and i'm just gonna be my time i study and then it, you, that 15 minutes turn to 30 minutes that's 30 minutes turn to 45 minutes because you make that time because a lot of us you get you get busy in your day and you before you know it it's time to lay down and you ain't you ain't you ain't sent up no prayers. You ain't studied because you didn't make the time to actually sit down and study. You didn't make the time to go and send up your prayers. You didn't make the time. So it says by opportunity of leisure. That opportunity of leisure ain't, ain't that opportunity of leisure is not just gonna fall on your lap. Where it's just gonna fall out the sky like, oh, I got some leisure time. That's very seldom to happen. Unless you would, and of course, if unless you were a single brother, single sister, they don't have any responsibilities. If if you're in that case, in that predicament, you have a whole lot of leisure time where you can, you can just get up and you're able to do it. But if you got a lot of responsibilities, a lot of things going on, you have to make that time. What club was that at? <laughs> that was admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they. I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You'll leave me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. That's what y'all do. Didn't have to class. Yeah, I knew what you were talking about. I just didn't want to be caught out there. The hell is this?
Get on my damn nerves. So read that again. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Oh!